90.9 The Vine in conjunction with Areasports.net proudly presents The Sports Couch. The Sports Couch is 60 minutes of great local sports talk each and every Saturday morning as we visit with area coaches, athletes, and other media personnel to cover the area of sports that's most important to you. Who will be on the couch this morning? Let's find out. The Sports Couch is on the air right now. And good morning, everyone. Welcome to another special edition of the Sports Couch here live on 90.9 The Vine Radio and streaming live on both of our websites at areasports.net and at wvyn.org. I'm Randy Olson, live in studio, along with Danny Anselman. And uh, if we seem a little bit more giddy this morning, well, it's because we got a very special guest this morning, don't we, Danny? We're looking forward to talking to you. Yes, you know, it's going to be an exciting show here this morning, Randy, and I think it's a show that's got a lot of anticipation. Uh, a lot of people have reached out this week, and they're very excited to hear from our guests this morning. We're talking about the blonde bomber, Jay Scheidler. He's going to join us here in just a little bit. And actually, we've been trying to connect with Jay, actually, for a number of years. And uh, just kind of lost track, but uh, we have uh, reconnected, and so we're looking forward to having him on the show this morning as we take a trip down memory lane during the uh, old old Lawrenceville High School days, as well as the Kentucky days, and everything in between. Uh, you know, he was a guy a lot of young kids, including myself, idolized because he was a showman when he played at the <laughs> high school and college level. He, uh, he sure was, and I had a privilege of playing against him. Uh, I say privilege, but he beat our brains out just like he did most people. <laughs> yeah. But we'll talk about that when we get into the conversation with Jay here in just a moment. Uh, last night was meet the team night for at least some of the high schools in the area. I know at Fairfield got theirs in. Mount Vernon had some rain, but they got theirs in. Uh, Marion, I think, got rained out. And what, what happened to McLeansboro last night? They canceled night? theirs last night. Uh, the field was just pretty sloppy and stuff, and they just made the decision early in the day just to mm -hmm. postpone it last okay. night. Okay, and I did not uh, check with uh, Brian Tackett this morning. I don't know if they got theirs in at Flora last night or not, but uh, I'm assuming that at least they tried to, I know, and uh, hopefully they did. How about those St. Louis Cardinals? Uh, they bounced back after that uh, loss with another win last night, the first of a three-game series against the Milwaukee Brewers. Huge, huge win because now the Cardinals are just a half game out in the wild card race. Yeah, you know, uh, it's amazing what a turnaround. Uh, oh. Just some changes have made. But, you know, uh, this guy right here is doing a heck of a job with this baseball team. Mike Schilt. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes, he is. Yeah. And uh, look for him to become the full-time manager here. He got some very good, encouraging words from Mr. DeWitt yesterday. And yes, he did. Sounds to me like he's kind of about a cut-and-dried deal. Well, he started out 19-9, and nine, and no other manager in the history of the St. Louis Cardinals has started 19-9. and nine. And the St. Louis Cardinals went from having last month the most strikeouts in the mm -hmm. league to this month they have the least amount of strikeouts. Well, I think that if you're the Milwaukee Brewers or the Chicago Cubs, you're looking over your shoulder right now, and you really don't want to play the Cardinals because it's a totally, totally different baseball team now. Well, the young kids have brought a lot of enthusiasm and uh, – you can tell they love to play the game, and uh, it's brought a whole different atmosphere to this ball club. Brought almost the entire uh, roster from Memphis up to the big time. Stubby Claps probably thinking, geez, <laughs> guys, I'm trying to win 100 games down here. How about leaving me a few uh, crumbs? Oh, that's right. Uh, if you want to check out golf scores, because there's been quite a bit of uh, golf that's already been played on the high school level, just go to our sports website at areasports.net. You'll see a lot of golf scores posted there for both boys and girls. Your uh, Hamlet County Foxes boys team's off to a, a good start, Danny, as they got a, a win already. As um, let's see here, I got that in front of me, I believe. Yeah, they beat Carterville and Vienna in a triangular match. You know, uh, the golf program in Hamilton County just seems to keep rolling along down there right now. They've got some good young players, and uh, they've had a lot of success the last few years. And next week, of course, next Friday night is uh, week number one of the high school football season. Uh, some of the games are conference games and some are not. In the Black Diamond, they're all conference games. And a couple of those uh, first-round matchups, first-week matchups, will really tell us something as El Dorado will take on Chester in week one. Carmi takes on Cesar Valera in week one. And Fairfield will take on Johnson City in week one. Those are probably the three most intriguing matchups in week one, wouldn't you say? Uh, I, it'll be interesting to see what Johnson City is under a new coach. Uh, they struggled a little bit last year. I think their numbers are down. So Johnson City's not going to be the powerhouse they have been. Right. I think it's probably, you know, the probably the best game is going to be that Carmi Cesar. Yeah, that'll be a great game. It sure will be. Little line eye conference. Uh, Flora Wolves will host the Red Hill Salukis. Red Hill, of course, was eleven and one last year, so that's going to be a tough first week matchup. 
Marshall will be at Lawrenceville, and, and the Indians don't have Jay Scheidler as quarterback anymore, so they'll have to figure out another way to, to do something there with Marshall. <laughs> Did you know he played football, they'd too? Probably, they'd probably be glad for him to come back yeah. and play. Did you know Jay played football, too? No. I will talk about that, too. In fact, i got a picture I'll put up on the screen of Jay playing quarterback when we get into that, so that'll be interesting. Uh, some of the intriguing games in um, some of the other conferences – uh, in the Apollo Conference, you will have, uh, well, actually non-conference games, but Effingham and Breeze Modern Day are two teams that were in the playoffs last year. They're going to play each other in week one. That's going to be a great matchup because those are two good teams from last year. Yeah, you know, uh, there will be a lot of good games around. You know, well, high school football season is usually pretty competitive week in, week out. And you only play nine games. you got to win five of them to make yourself playoff eligible, and so it's so important to – Get off on a good track there. Mattoon plays Triad in week one. That's another one to circle. That'll be a very intriguing game between those two. They were both in the playoffs last year. Harrisburg and Mount Carmel is always a big game. Oh, yeah, don't you know it. Murfreesboro, Carbondale will be a big matchup as well. I forgot how many years they said this game has went on, but it's several years they've played this game. Mm Mm-hmm. So, uh, again, you can check out the schedule of all the Week 1 games on our sports website at areasports.net, and uh, everything is there for you. All right. Well, without any further ado, we want to get into our guest of honor this morning. And I'll tell you what, if you grew up in the mid-'70s at all, you remember the Blonde Bomber, Jay Scheidler, and what he did at Lawrenceville High School. It was uh, truly amazing. They won a state championship in 1974, finished third place in 1976. He went on with a storied career at the University of Kentucky and uh, won a national championship there in 1978 with the Kentucky Wildcats. Got drafted by the Chicago Bulls in the ninth round uh, of the NBA. You know who was the coach of the Bulls at that time? Jerry Sloan. He was. Jerry Sloan. Our friend Jerry Sloan was the coach of the Bulls at that time. So, uh, But he had some uh, nagging injuries that uh, kind of preempted his career there. But um, Jay uh, was such an incredible athlete. Uh, not just in basketball, but some other sports, too, that we'll get into. And we're just glad to have him on the sports couch this morning. Good morning, Jay. How are you? Good morning, fellas. How are we doing this morning? We are doing great. It's uh, an honor to have the Blonde Bomber on the sports couch with us. You're uh, you're down the Bluegrass State, I guess, this morning, right? Yes, sir, I am. Uh-huh. Okay. Absolutely, so, yeah. So you, outside of Kentucky. Okay, so you've been living down there ever since you, you graduated college at Kentucky, right? Uh, yeah, that's that's correct. Um, I did go and play ball overseas for one year, uh, two or three years after I got finished uh, here at UK. But, uh, yeah, I've been here ever since. Okay, all right. Well, Jay, I'll tell you what, uh, it's it's been 42 years since I've last talked to you on, on a basketball floor. As, of course, you played at Lawrenceville. I was at Flora. We were in that uh, North Egypt conference. And, and um a lot of waters went under the bridge in 42 years, and it's really great to hear your voice and great to reconnect with you. It's it's good to talk with you, Randy. Uh, you you could uh, I could have gone without listening to the forty two years. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> where does the time go? But you know those were uh, those were great days back there and uh, back then, and, and a great time to be growing up in that area and uh, a very very special time. Well, I know that there's a lot of people that are listening in or watching in this morning. We are also video streaming this interview with you this morning, Jay, on areasports.net. And those of you who are watching the video stream, they're going to enjoy a lot of these uh, photos that we're going to put up on the screen of you from back in the day. And, and that's going to be pretty entertaining, too. And, of course, we will, uh, we will archive this as well so everybody can, can check it out in archive a little bit later on as well. Great. Uh, just try to get my best side. <laughs> I think well, every I think every side was your best I, side. There. I just got a message from a former uh, player against you. Tony Phelps played at Albany. Uh, he's down in Missouri watching this morning. How about that? Is, is that right? Good. Good. Great. Great. So you remember Tony Phelps, and uh, we got a message from another guy here that uh, he played against you. Remember Jay Rector at Carmi? I do remember those names. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, J- absolutely. Jay Rector had the afro back then. You remember that? I'm sorry. <laughs> I say Jay Rector had the afro back then. Oh wow! Yeah. I didn't talk about that again, you know? Yeah, it was a good time. Good That's time. Cool. I'm glad they're checking in. Well, I'm glad that they are too. Well, let's uh, let's get into it here. And um, you know, you're not the only member of the Scheidler family, of course, that that was very accomplished at basketball. Uh, your your older brother Dennis, of course, was a great player, an all-stater uh, at Lawrenceville. And your dad was also an all-stater. And all three of you are members of the Lawrenceville High School Hall of Fame. So uh, here you come along as as number three. But 
what a what an athletic family, and uh, that's a really a special bond that 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 you and your brother and your dad had there. Yeah, we were uh, we were blessed. Um, you know, my my father, well, like we said, we in the late forties, uh, mid to late forties, was was an excellent athlete, uh, basketball and football. Uh, uh, some say that we got to go to school with him and see him play. Last, you know, during those times, say that he was probably the best of all three of us. Um, I don't have any video of that, so I can't really, I can't really uh, uh, say much about that. But he was a great athlete, and my brother came along and was a tremendous three-sport athlete. And, and and then you know I tried to play as many sports as I, I could too. But you know, I mean, that's what can you say about that? You know, three guys uh, out of the same family um, doing the things they did. Uh, you know, we were blessed, and and, and it was. It was incredible. It, it, it really was. Well, there was a great article that was written about you and your brother and your dad by Pete Swanson in the Evansville Courier, and I've got that. I've still got that original article, and, and you might want to have that because that thing's suitable for framing. Uh, I've got a picture of it up on the screen right now, Jay, and he goes into great detail about your dad and about Dennis and about you uh, leading into that 1976 season, which was your senior year. And there's a lot of comments in there from uh, both your dad and your mother, too. So it's a great, great article. I don't know if you remember that article in The Courier from Pete Swanson, but uh, it was kind of neat going back and reading that again. I- I'm glad that I saved the article because it's a pretty cool thing to have. Yeah, I, I-, I don't remember the article. Um, I do remember, you know, talking with Pete many, many times back then, one of my favorite sports writers uh, back during that time uh, at Evansville. Um, I would, uh, if he could get me a copy of that somehow, some way, I would love to to, uh, to see that and read that again. Oh, absolutely. I'll be happy to do that. I'll be happy to do that. You know, and in addition to the Evansville Courier, an- another one of the major newspapers that covered you a lot back then was the Decatur Herald. And it seemed like uh, no matter where you played at, uh, that Lawrenceville team and you, you were always followed by the Decatur Herald and the Evansville Courier. Even though they were quite a distance from, from Lawrenceville themselves, those two newspapers covered you like glue. Uh, yeah, they, uh, I do remember a lot of contact with the Decatur Herald uh, and the Evansville Courier. Um, Chicago sometimes got involved a little bit, you know, sometimes. But, uh, yeah, it was uh, they, they covered us pretty well and, and did a really good job with, uh, you know, following us and, and keeping up with what we were doing and reporting it to the people. Yeah, it was great. Well, let's start a trip down memory lane, and let's begin with your sophomore season, okay? So 1974 was your sophomore season. I've got a team picture of that 1974 team up on the screen. You were a young sophomore there, and uh, Rick Leasty was the stud senior on that team that year. Tell me some of your great memories from 1974, Jay. Okay. Um, you know, Rick, like you said, he was he was a, a great, great, and he was a good athlete, too. He played baseball as well and was a real good baseball player. Of course, I guess growing up in those areas, we, we all did as played as many sports as we could, just to be able to feel the team. I guess I don't know if it was the you know the same uh, you know in four, but uh, excuse me, uh, that team was was an uh, incredible team. Of course, Rick had been on the '72 championship team, plus our starting guard uh, in '74, Billy Hybrider, mm-hmm. was on the '72 championship team as well. So they had, you know, they had us that type of experience, and uh, we started four seniors and myself as a starting five that year, and uh, you know we just came together and 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 and, and played well together and and uh, went on the run. I know that we, uh, I think we won the first, and we lost in the Danville tournament uh, at the beginning of the year in the Thanksgiving uh, 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 round robin that they had every year that we participated in. And then uh, went on a little run and, and lost two games at Carbondale in the Carbondale Holiday Tournament, and then uh, didn't lose another game the rest of that year. So uh, Rick was an incredible performer. He averaged about 31 points a game. Great athlete, run the floor, and he ended up going playing. Uh, I think three years at Illinois for Coach Louis Henson. But uh, you know, with with that team and 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 uh, uh, with Coach Spelling at the helm, you know. Uh, we just uh, we had an incredible year, an incredible run. And it was it's uh, you know it's hard to explain the feeling you get you know when you win a state tournament and and because uh, they had just won a couple of years before, like I said. And uh, but it was super super team. I'm still in contact, <clears throat> excuse me, with quite a few of those guys. Uh, we just saw each other here a few years back. Uh, we got together back in Lawrenceville, and and it was good to see some of the guys I hadn't seen since since that team. So. Uh, 
Yeah, great memories, great memories. Yeah, that 1974 team, like you say, uh, coming off that, that state championship in 72. And I believe when the Indians won the state championship in 72, I think that was the very – was that not the very first year of the two-class system? Was that right? Yeah, it was. Yeah, absolutely. You're, you're, you're correct, yeah. Yeah, I think it was. So – so Rick Leasty was a sophomore in 72 when they won it. You were a sophomore in 74 when you won it. And uh, that team in 1974 that you were on um, as a sophomore went 30-3 and that season. And uh, you mentioned a couple losses there in the, in the Carbondale Holiday Tournament. There's one other loss that you took that year, and I don't know if you remember it or not, but people around here remember it, and they still talk about it, and that is you went into the Mule Barn at Fairfield, and you guys got upset by the Fairfield Mules. Do you remember that game? Okay, no, I don't, because I thought we had lost one game at the Danville uh, tournament during Thanksgiving. I do, I didn't remember losing uh, losing to Fairfield that year. Wow. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Right. and I've actually got a picture up on the screen uh, from that game that was provided courtesy of the Wayne County Press. And uh, yeah, that's a feather in the cap of the Fairfield people around here. Is that they beat a state championship team that year and. Uh, it shows you uh, under the basket there as a sophomore. And, um, yeah, that was a big upset at, at that time, at that year, for sure. But uh, what a fantastic run you had in 1974, bringing home the, the hardware there. Yeah, I, I certainly don't remember that because I thought that I had gone uh, all four years in, in, in high school without losing a conference game. But, you know, uh, apparently I was wrong. So. <laughs> well, after 42 years, it's hard to remember everything, <laughs> Jay. Yeah, yeah, I can yeah, tell you that. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right. All right, well, then we move on to, uh, to 1975, and um, 1975, the enrollment was different at Lawrenceville, and so you guys got bumped up into double-A. Yeah, uh, I don't know how it came about. Uh, we had, uh, obviously, we had an influx of a, of a, of a huge freshman class and, and didn't lose too many seniors from the year before, so, yeah, we were... I think the cutoff was about 750 uh, students enrolled uh, in the school with the cutoff between uh, Class A and Class AA. And for some reason, uh, I think we ended up with 700 and 763 or 765. So it was just right there uh, on the borderline. But yeah, we uh, we uh, we were classified AA that year. So um, it was kind of strange for us. But uh, and we went out pretty early in the tournament. I don't think that that had anything to do with it uh, uh, because we played uh, Mount Carmel. Mount Carmel, right? Mount Carmel, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, over at uh, over in the Olney Regional, right? And uh, uh, didn't have a very good game, and and you know they they caught us uh, on a night. Now I think we lost by one or two. I can't remember. Um, but yeah, we just kind of had an off night because well, I'm, I'm sure that we had beat them. Uh, both times during, during the year. You the did. Yes, you did. So, you beat them twice during the conference season. Sure did. Yeah. Yep. It was a kind of surprise, but, you know, uh, it is what it is. And, and uh, uh, kudos to them. They, you know, they knocked us out of the tournament. I don't know how much farther they went you know, in, the, in the tournament that year. But, uh, yeah, it was kind of, a, you know, uh, disappointing because Lawrenceville was always, you know, used to winning and, mm-hmm. and at least getting out of the regional, you know, and, and, and stuff. So, yeah, it was different for us at that time. Yeah, again, uh, 1975, that team went 21-5, and and you did lose in the regional there to, uh, to Mount Carmel by, uh, I think, just a point or two. And, and that was actually a tight game all the way through. I think it was uh, one point after the first quarter, one point at halftime, and maybe one or two points after three quarters. So nobody ever had much of a big lead in that game. And I think you had 29 in that game, so you were a little below your average. But, uh, yeah, Mount Carmel just uh, happened to be hot that night, I believe. Yeah, they were, and uh, like I said, we really didn't play our best game, and uh, I know that uh, uh, at one point, I, it was late the game, I'm pretty sure, too, um, they were uh, shooting a foul, they were at the foul line, and it, the ball kind of bounced around and came out, and I went up to try to get the rebound, and, and uh, I'll be darned if I didn't tip it back in, so uh, it might have been the difference between us. Oh, wow. And so I, them. Uh, and uh, I had never done that before, so that was really disappointing. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you know, you know, a loss is a loss, and and you, and, and you, you take your lumps and you move on. So, you know, uh, we did. Uh, we were able to that year. Um, I must, you know, I have to say that we did win the Carmendale uh, Holiday Tournament that year. And, yes. and you know, uh, we beat uh, Collinsville and uh, Chicago Thornridge back to back in the right. finals. 
to win that tournament. So, you know, we were a pretty good team uh, to beat those kind of teams. Oh, uh, yeah. Like that. Yeah, because well, you, know. you were playing double-A teams down there at the Carbondale Holiday Tournament, beating Dalton Thornridge and, uh, and Collinsville. And I think, I think in your first-round match down there, if I don't, re- don't recall or don't uh, forget, I think you also beat Chicago St. Patrick down there, too. So I think you beat three double-A teams down there to win that Carbondale Tournament, if I recall. So. I, can't, I, I don't remember if we played them uh, my junior year. I know that we had lost to Chicago St. Pat the year before mm-hmm. in in the uh, consolation game at the Carmdale tournament. And uh, Rick, if, if my memory serves right, um, Rick had an imp- incredible game that, that night against Chicago St. Pat. I, I can't remember if it went into overtime, but it was a really, really hot, contested game. And I think Rick ended up with 43 or 47 or something like that. And, mm-hmm. and we just fell short uh, in the consolation game. But uh, and I believe Collinsville ended up winning it that year uh, uh, with uh, Mark Fletcher. Yeah. And I think he got 47 or 48 in the championship game. So, yeah, there was a lot of talent in that tournament. Uh, a lot of teams that catered. We always had uh, Eisenhower there. And, and uh, yeah, it was a super tournament. So we were fortunate to win that tournament. And, and at that time, we were 14-1 and one and, 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 uh, and ranked, I don't know, I think we were ranked uh, – in the top five at least uh, at that point, but then you know we had our struggles later on and and finished like you said uh, getting knocked out of the tournament by Mount Carmel. So yeah, but it was still a good year for us. Oh, it was a great year. Again, you were twenty-one and five, and you were the only returning starter off on that team from the seventy-four team that won the state championship. You were the only returning starter in seventy-five. So, so uh, correct. So correct. again, uh, Coach Felling had to kind of circle the wagons and kind of readjust things without uh, Rick Leasty there. Yeah, we did. And as a matter of fact, I, I think, let's see, I'm trying to think. Um, I may have been the only one coming back from that from the 74 team that really had any playing time at all. So mm-hmm. we were kind of a, you know, we were kind of a, a mix and match group in, in 75. But again, you know, with, with spelling behind us and, and, and everything, and, and uh, you know, we were able, we were able to, Scrape out the big tournament win, you know, at, at Carbondale, and then uh, go twenty-one and five. And, and if we would have been in Class A, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure I, I got a good feeling that you know we would have gone a little farther in the tournament in Class A. But you know, it is what it is. Yeah. Well, Jay, uh, talk a little bit about Coach Felling. Uh, had to be quite an experience playing for a man like him. I'm sure there was a lot of expectations, especially for guys like you, that he could put a lot of responsibility on. Just talk a little bit about that relationship. Okay, um, you know, Marshall had a good, uh, has always had good sports teams, and, and especially basketball and football, and even back to the, you know, to the 1930s and stuff. I mean, the, the, the history of that, the school is, is just incredible athletic-wise. But uh, Coach Spelling came in, I think it was in 1967, or 66 or 67 was his first year, I think, as the head coach. Um, but, you know, playing for him, I mean, he was just, Incredibly, incredibly talented at, at at getting the most out of a player that he possibly could. If you had just a little bit out of talent and and could help in any way, he was able to get that out of you. And because uh, we didn't have a lot of great talent, you know, we had a lot of good talent, and and we were very smart ball players, which which he taught and 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 uh, you know pushed on us. Uh, we defended well, which was was one of his things too. And and of course he taught everybody how to shoot. The guy was an incredible shooter himself. Uh, but you know it was it was tough at times. You know, coach was hard, but you know every a lot of coaches were back then, and 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 uh, it was not a big deal. That's just the way it was. But uh, you know he he just believed in you and believed in us and and believed in our abilities and and wanted us to be the best people we, and basketball players and athletes we probably you know possibly and um, you know it was incredible. He just uh, he just had the knack, like I say, of, of getting every being able to get every ounce of ability out of out of the players. And uh, uh, we couldn't have done anything, couldn't have come close to anything that we eventually accomplished without uh, without Coach Felling being there. Well, that was one of the questions I was going to ask: is is who was responsible really for for you developing that that patented sh- jump shot that you had, Jay? Because you had perhaps the most perfect form I've ever seen anybody have in, in high school basketball. Uh, I mean, just the perfect shot. And then your 
you know, your vertical jump, your vertical leap was incredible too. You would always just uh, rise above everybody. I was, you know, again, I was blessed, you know, with God-given talents. Um, my, again, going back to my father and, 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 and my brother, my brother was an incredible shooter. Uh, and it just came natural for me. Um, of course, when I was growing up now, I, I, I didn't really play with a lot of kids my age. <clears throat> when I was 10, 11, 12, 13 years old, uh, I would always play with my brother and his friends. So it, it kind of helped me in a way to go against stronger, bigger, faster, you know, better players all the time during the summer and pick up games and that sort of thing. So I owe that, you know, I want to that just being able to compete against his friends and older friends and, and things. Because so they were great athletes too and had great teams. But, um, yeah, Coach, uh, Coach, like I said, he was an incredible shooter and, and knew – knew how to spot what was going wrong, knew how to spot, you know, where the ball was in the shooting uh, position and this and that and everything. It could tweak it and, and work on it. And we worked on it uh, constantly, believe me. But, uh, yeah, I mean, he just he could see things like that and, and just knew how to how to teach it and how to coach it. Um, and, made, and, like I said, made everybody in, in the, that played for him really, really good shooters. Well, I, I know that you spent hours and hours in the gym, and that's really what it takes to be a, a special kind of player and develop that shot and get that muscle memory going. And I know that you spent hours in the gym, didn't you? I did. I did. I probably didn't spend as much time as one would think. I know I didn't spend as much time in the gym during the summertime, that sort of thing, as, as my father would have wanted me to. But uh, there was a lot of times I would, we just lived around the corner growing up from a little uh, Catholic school that had some outdoor courts, so I would go over there in the summertime quite a bit by myself and, and just play games by myself in my head and this and that, you know, stuff like, like kids do. Um, and I spent a lot of time on the outside courts uh, outside the high school. Um, I know there was, we had a couple of uh, basketball goals in the parking lot of the high school, and and um, I would get bored maybe at night sometimes, and, and uh, I'd say, well, I'm, I'm just going to go up and shoot around. And uh, the thing about it was <clears throat> they had chain, chain link nets on the goal. The <laughs> yeah, I remember those, yeah. Uh-huh. <clears throat> you remember those? Oh, I do. Oh, yeah. sure, yeah. Yeah, so I would be up there. I'd flip on the light, you know, so I could see and, and, and uh, be out there shooting around. And, and uh Finally, uh, sometimes uh, the people that lived, <laughs> lived up there around us, they would call my parents and say, you know, Jay's up here shooting again. We're trying to get some sleep. Because <laughs> 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 you tell him to, you know, uh, cut it off for the night, you know, because I'd be out there and you'd hear that chink and the chink and everything and stuff. So, yeah, it was kind of funny. But I would do that, you know, quite, quite, uh, quite often. Oh, uh, that's, but yeah, that's great. Time, but I was, I was so much involved in other sports and things, so... I, you know, I really didn't get to spend the time in the off season of basketball that I that I really could have if I hadn't uh, you know been involved in baseball in the summertime and and, and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, yeah. Well, that brings up a good point because a lot of people, you know, they don't realize that you you played other sports, but you actually were uh, were quite a good uh, football player as well. In fact, you I got a picture on the screen of you right now playing quarterback your junior year, and this was a this picture was taken in a game I think against. Uh, I think against Bridgeport or Red Hill. And in this particular game, you threw for two touchdown passes, you rushed for 135 yards, and you kicked a 32-yard field goal. I, I'd say that's a pretty good game, Jay. <laughs> yeah, it was uh, – I played uh, – I wanted to play all four years. Um, I played my freshman year, and towards the end of the freshman year football season, I hurt my leg. Um, I, I got uh, – my thigh pad pocket had broken my pants, and the thigh pad had slid around to the back, and uh, uh, the defender ran his helmet right into the right thigh with the, with the thigh pad not being there, and it kind of uh, uh, bruised it really deep. And so I decided to take my sophomore year off and then decided to play my, again my junior year. And, and of course, I loved football growing up, probably growing up football was my favorite sport. Um, so my, you know, my I decided to play my junior year. I didn't really want to play quarterback. Um, I went out to to play. Um, I guess back then they would call it a flanker or, or now a slot guy. Yeah. Because uh, my best friend Dave Hesher, uh, who was was on the uh, the basketball teams with me, he was the quarterback, and um, I didn't want to take a spot from him. And I thought that I could just help out 
doing other things. Um, and I guess it was about the third or fourth year, I mean, third or fourth game of that season. Um, at halftime, Coach uh, Coach Clarence Reed came to me and said, "Look, you know, we, we've we've got to have you play for us. We've got to have you play back, uh, quarterback." So I said, "Okay, you know, whatever it takes." So I started playing quarterback from that on for the rest of the season, probably the last last uh, six or seven games, um, and I enjoyed it. You know, but if you look in that picture, I'm wearing number 32, and <laughs> that's really not a quarterback number. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, right. <laughs> But, you know, we uh, we had a good football team. I enjoyed football. And, and as a matter of fact, Florida beat, kept us from going to the uh, the playoffs. Uh-huh. I think that was the year that we, were, we could have been in the playoffs. Yeah. And, and Florida beat us and put us in a, a three-way tie with us and them and Mount Carmel. Uh-huh. And they uh, eventually voted Mount Carmel as conference champs uh, to break the tie, and they went on. And as a matter of fact, they went on and got beat in the championship game. They they made it to the to the finals, and they got beat. I, I'm not sure who they lost. Yeah, to. that's right. Um, that is right. Wow. So, so it's more out of it. Yeah. Well, hey, uh, stick with us, Jay. We're going to take a, a quick uh, break here to, to hear a few uh, spots from a couple of our underwriters, and then we'll rejoin you here on the Sports Couch, all right? So uh, just hold the line, and we will return back in just a little bit as we visit with basketball legend Jay Scheidler. We will be back with more on the Sports Couch in just a moment. It's the local sports talk show that everyone is talking about. It's the Sports Couch on 90.9, The Vine, and areasports.net. Are you going out of town for a vacation or a weekend getaway? What are you going to do with your dog? That's easy. There's Jagger's Doggy Daycare in Mount Vernon. Jagger's Doggy Daycare is your one-stop shop for overnight dog boarding, doggy daycare, as well as dog grooming, and obedience dog training. It's your dog's home away from home. and They will thrive, and they'll get one-on-one attention by a great staff. More information is available on the web at jaggersdoggydaycare.com. Jaggers Doggy Daycare, 414 Main Street in Mount Vernon. The Greenwald family has been farming this land for generations. Year after year, season after season, they depend on knowing that all their hard work, regardless of tough times or stormy weather, will bear fruit. With all the ups and downs of farming, they knew they needed a banking partner they could count on. FNB was there. Hardworking, reliable, and always willing to help yield positive results. They've been by the Greenwald side for many years. For their farm, for their lives. FNB. Banking. Business. Life. Member FDIC. Equal housing lender. You've heard the old saying, practice makes perfect. Well, there's actually a lot of truth to that. And you can get one-on-one instruction in baseball, softball, basketball, as well as speed and agility drills at the Sports Zone in Fairfield. The Sports Zone has been in business for quite some time now and has helped many area boy and girl athletes excel in their sport of choice. Lessons and practice times are available at convenient times that meet your schedule. The Sports Zone is located on Delaware Street in Fairfield, and we appreciate their support. Hey, welcome back to the Sports Couch. You're live on a Saturday morning on 105.5 and 90.9 The Vine Radio and also streaming live worldwide on both of our websites. We have live video streaming right now at areasports.net and live audio streaming at wvyn.org. I'm Randy Olson, live in studio along with Danny Ounsman. We are visiting this morning with the Blonde Bomber. That's right. Basketball legend Jay Scheidler is on the show with us today. We're devoting almost our entire show to Jay and because there's a lot to talk to, and we're ready to... Uh, Jump into that uh, that magical season, that 1976 season, your senior year, Jay, and and what a great year, and what some great memories you have from that. You know, absolutely. Uh, you know, your final year in high school, and, and let me go back just for a second. I didn't want to take anything away from Dave Hesher as being a quarterback. He was a great quarterback mm-hmm. uh, for our football team, uh, but Dave was about five nine and and 130 pounds soaking wet. Yeah. And, and wasn't very fast and that sort of thing. So really, quarterback was about the only thing that he could do. And I didn't want to, he was my best friend. I didn't want to knock him out of the spot. So sure. anyway, I, no, not taking anything away from Dave. Yeah. But, hey, uh, hey, where's Dave at today, by the way? Haven't heard from him in many years. I'm sorry? I say, where is Dave at today? Haven't heard from him in many years. He is still in Lawrence. 
Marshall. He's just re- he just retired here recently uh, from Marathon Oil Company that he worked for almost 40 years. All right. Well, good for him. All right. That's yeah, great. Yeah. That's great. Great guy. Uh, all right. Well, I've got the uh, I've got the 1976 team picture up on the screen right now for those people watching our live stream. And again, 1976, you you guys had uh, a little bit of a um, mm, maybe chip on your shoulder coming into that because the fact that you went out so early in the regional in '75 and you had uh, virtually everybody back for a '76 season, your senior year, and you guys were loaded for bear and ready to go, weren't you? Yeah, we were. You know, uh, we had uh, we had some good players with some experience uh, you know, from the from the previous year, and uh, we started. I think four four seniors and a junior. Dave Wagner was our junior starter that year. Uh, really, really good player. Um, yeah, Dave came over from uh, Bridgeport, didn't he? He came over from uh, Red Hill. Yes, absolutely, he did. Yep. And, and really contributed. Really, really, really was the final piece, you know, to to the starting five, and and uh, had some had some really great games. Um, you know, but we uh, we weren't very big, we weren't very fast or anything like that. But you know, we uh, we just defended well and we were very smart, um, and and uh, you know, just had a heck of a year. Uh, we we got uh, I think we were I can't remember what the first first few games we won, but we lost a game uh, in the Carbondale tournament uh, to, to give us our first loss, and then we kind of went on another little run and, and lost to uh, Roba in the semifinals at Champaign. Right. But uh, uh, incredible guys, you know, incredible players. And, and uh, you know, I just want to say that they, they those, everybody that I played with, especially that team, you know, made so many sacrifices for, you know, for us to be to win and, and to be successful. I mean, you know, they, they all were great players. But to sacrifice what they did, to, you know, to give up the ball as much as they did and this and that and, and – and not say anything about it, you know. I, I just I owe it all to those guys, and 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 uh, because there's not too many people that will, you know, that would have made those sacrifices. You know, I want to shoot it. You know, I want to do it. You know, that sort of thing. But uh, we messed together, and and we knew what we had to do to be successful. And you know, it, it turned out great. Uh, well, we probably should have won the state tournament that year. I, I feel bad that that uh, I couldn't get us over the hump and 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 get us that third championship. Uh, but you know, third place isn't bad, and 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 uh, you know, we got there. Like a lot of teams, a lot of teams uh, may never get there. So uh, yeah, it was an incredible season and a lot of fun, and, and and we enjoyed every second of it. Well, Jay, I'm sure another thing that played into this process along this way here this season. By this point in time, you were a pretty known hot commodity, and I'm sure this college recruitment uh, had to play a big factor in this season for you. Um, you know, it, it really didn't. Um, I was fortunate enough to have my brother five years earlier go through the recruiting things and stuff like that, and, and so I had I had seen kind of how the process goes. And of course, the, the the recruiting rules had changed a little bit by the time I came around. Um, you could only make six official visits, and 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 you, the uh, uh, assistant coaches or recruiters from the colleges couldn't. Couldn't spend the night on, on on your living room floor and and, and, and either like, <laughs> like they did for my brother because there was people all around all twenty four seven it seemed like his senior year in, in, in high school so um, and my parents going through that the first time kind of had it uh, a better way to to approach it and to handle it uh, I uh, I wasn't uh, the recruiters couldn't call past you know nine or ten o'clock at night. Uh, you know, I, they wouldn't allow me to talk to them at certain times. That and that. So um, they made it they made it really easier for me. You know, in that in that sense, so I could you know so I could focus on really what was going on. So um, the recruiting really really wasn't a hassle at that time. Hmm. Well, that nineteen seventy six season again, you could get third place. So you go twenty nine and two overall. And uh, for the season, you were averaging 32.6 points per game. 32.6 points per game your, your senior season, all without a three-point line. And that's the most amazing statistic about you, Jay, is because most of your shots came from 20 to 25 feet out. And to average 32.6 points per game without a three-point line is, is just incredible. Well, I appreciate that. And, and, and yeah, I mean, it's, I, it was – it would be kind of interesting to see what would have happened if there was a line, you know. But uh, there wasn't. We didn't think about it, you know. It was just uh, that's the way it was. But 
Yeah, I uh, I took a, a majority of my shots from from probably beyond that line or close to it, and and uh, um, you know it's just, and I think I shot. 52 or 54 percent for the for the for the year mm-hmm. uh, from the from the field and and you don't see that very often nowadays with everybody trying to shoot the threes and stuff but uh, you know again uh, the technique and everything that Felling taught and Felling teached and everything you know played into it and and I was just fortunate to be able to have that kind of God gift talent to, you know to be able to to do those things um, but yeah it was uh, it was really incredible time. Well, I got a picture of your starting five on the on the screen right now from 1976, and and again, you and Dave Hesher, Dave Wagner, Rick Pickering, and Nathan Schnauz. I don't know if you're aware of it, but Nathan passed away here in the last month or so. Did you know that? Yes, I, I found out from Dave. Uh, it's been a couple of months. Yeah, uh, right. I knew that he was ill. I knew that he was ill and that he was fighting it. Uh, and and uh, you know, God bless his soul. He, Nate Nate came up there for us in in the, in the state uh, tournament run. Um, in a lot of games, uh, I know in the super sectional, he made a couple of bat- big baskets and a couple of big blocks for us to get us to champagne. So, uh, yeah, I was I was so sorry and so sad to hear that. Uh, um, he was a good guy and, and a good player, a quiet player. But uh, yeah, I, I, you know, it's, it's, it, we were all sad to hear that news. Well, you mentioned earlier about um, how those guys, you know, gave up a lot to allow you to shoot the ball that year, and and they did. They they bought into the team concept that that Coach Filling uh, tried to get them to do. And and having played against you, I saw it uh, firsthand that these guys were constantly, I mean, constantly setting screens. They were setting uh, single screens, double screens, all kinds of picks to get you open so that you could get your shot. And, of course, you only needed about an inch to uh, <laughs> to get a shot off because you could – didn't could, need much room. No, because you could elevate so much and just go up above everybody. But mm-hmm. one thing I remember about one of the guys on that team setting picks was, was Pickering. Uh, Rick uh, had, that, uh, had that great big elbow pad that he wore all the time. You remember that, Jay? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, and yeah. and so sometimes coming across the lane, you know, he would catch one of us under the chin or something with that <laughs> with that yeah. elbow pad. You know, it was a pretty effective pick. Yeah. We, you know, we worked hard at that, you know. And again, I was, you know, they were always looking for me and and looking for my man to try to set a pick, and and uh, I pretty much just ran around for thirty two minutes, you know, trying to get open and stuff, but. Uh, you know, we uh, they did the, you know they did their job perfectly and 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 helped us be successful and and again you know I, I owe a lot to those guys because they did sacrifice. Well, let's jump ahead to the state tournament then in 1976, and again, uh, all of state of Illinois was enthralled with you, Jay, because you got up there and and you know you put on such a shooting clinic up there and. And uh, the shot, I, one of the shots I get up on the screen right now, the one on the left, is an iconic photo that was taken of you in the Oneida Rova game. Again, showing your vertical leap, how high you got in the air on that picture perfect jump shot. That photo still today is on the wall in the Peoria Civic Center where the uh, state tournament is played now. That's uh, how much. Uh, that photo means, and uh, that's pretty cool. When you visit the Peoria Civic Center where the state tournament's played, your photo is still up there on the wall. Wow, that's incredible. I did not know that. Um, I, I had Somebody had sent me a picture of, of when the from tournament first moved there, um, and they, they, I did see that picture, but I had no idea that it was still up. Yeah, that's, that's incredible. Wow. Yeah, that is. That's neat. Well, uh, and of course, leading into the state tournament, you, you played a, a good Lebanon team in the Super Sectional at, um, at Eastern Illinois University. And I can't remember the guy's name that played for Lebanon. Maybe you can remember his name. He was a, he was a talented black guy. Um, he's on the screen right now. And, and I cannot remember his name, but that was probably the, one of the best Lebanon teams they've ever had. And had it been any other year, they probably would have went to the state tournament, but they, they couldn't stop you and the Indians. Um, they did have a good team. They 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 uh, they were ranked towards the top of the state, I think, pretty much all year. And uh, we were we were not really looking forward to playing there, just to be quite honest with you. Um, and and uh, I didn't play very well in that game. And again, the uh, uh, pick came up. The pick ring came up. I call him Pick. I'm sorry, uh, but he came up big in that game. Um, and, and again, going back, Nathan, Nathan Schnauz had had some some. Tremendous plays down the stretch to help us get you know get through Lebanon, and uh, you'll make it on the Champagne. So yeah, that was that was uh, the most difficult time that we had uh, in the tournament. You know before we got to Champagne, no doubt. 
And then, uh, of course, when you got to Champaign, then you, you took on Aurora Marmion in the first round and you took care of them. And uh, then you had that epic. What, what's that? I said, do we have to talk about that game? Yeah, well, yeah, you didn't shoot very well in that game. I remember that because I was there. Um, uh, yeah, you did not shoot very well in that game. But, uh, but hey, you, you found a way to get it done. Yeah, I was yeah fortunate. Yeah, because that was that was the I had never had that happen to me before in my life, and uh, because I started out pretty well in the game, I think I started out by like seven for ten, and then uh, the uh, the walls came in after that. So uh, yeah, I think I ended up going fifteen for forty four from the field, which is not uh, very impressive. But you know, fortunately we won. And and uh, due to the other guys, you know, uh, they played well, and, and and we stayed in the game and ended up winning. So I had a you know I had a chance to kind of redeem myself after that. Well, and then you got into that epic game in the semifinals against Oneida Rova, and um, boy, I will tell you what, that was incredible. You had forty eight points in that game again without a three point line. Uh, your shooting percentage was was stellar. So was the free throw percentage. But there was a big old boy. On Oneida Rova by the name of Dave Johnson. And, uh, boy, Dave, uh, he was a beast. He was a big guy. And uh, I, I guess that part of what you uh, what your game plan was that game with Coach Filling was to foul him if you had to. And you did foul him, and you fouled him a lot. And big Dave Johnson went to the free throw line 20 times, and he made 19 out of 20 in that game to set a state record that still stands today. And uh, that was kind of the difference in the game, wasn't it? It was, it was. I mean, we really had no answer for David. Um, but you know, he was six eight, I think, and and uh, uh, very very talented player, good shooter, nice touch from the outside. But yeah, I mean, we we really at times had no choice under the valley and and and, and hope that, that he missed. And, and unfortunately for us, uh, he did not miss that night. And uh, you know, I think he ended up with thirty one points, and like you said, nineteen of them from the foul line. So. Um, yeah, that was that was a big difference in the in the game. Um, plus, I think at at one point in time um, in the second half, I think Pickering got called for a uh, uh, for faking a charging foul um, that was called a technical, and uh, that hmm. I don't think I don't think we agreed with. Yeah, uh, was <laughs> not, not the greatest call in the world, uh-huh. and then. Uh, um, I, I got called for goaltending in that game. Uh, yeah, you I, did, I, you did, and guess what? I've got the wrong. I've got the picture, Jay. It's on the screen of you getting called for goaltending. And uh, I, think I, I think I got it clean, Randy. I, <laughs> <laughs> I can't imagine that. Well, it's uh, it's an interesting shot. Uh, the shot was taken from from out uh, from the corner someplace. And yeah. and you rise up in the lane above the rim, and yeah, you swat the thing away. And uh, I am a bit surprised that they called goaltending on that, but they did. But that just kind of showed your vertical leap that you had. Well, I, I think that the referees probably were in shock that uh, <laughs> that, that uh, a six one a six one white guy got up there. Yeah. To do that. <laughs> what I'm right. So I think they were kind of shocked and said, "Well, that had to be goaltending." Oh yeah. So that, that's what they call it, but uh, no, I, I'm pretty sure I got that point. Yeah, that uh, that was something. But like I said, you had incredible leaping ability, and that uh, certainly was was proof of it right there on on that. But uh, what an amazing thing! And, and then you come back, of course, in the third place game, Jay, and and you put on another show against Buddha Western. You get uh, 45 points in that one, and you guys get third place, and you wrap up a state tournament, setting a record for a. Uh, most field goals made, most points made in a uh, state tournament run, and and um, uh, again, it's third place. Not happy to to not get first place, but still, what an incredible season going twenty nine and two, and and bring home third place hardware. Yeah, absolutely. You know, uh, the twenty nine and two record. I think other than the uh, two back to back state championship and the sixty eight and old record they had in eighty two and eighty three. Uh, winning percentage wise, I think the wise. Uh, I think that was the second highest winning percentage of, of any of Coach Belling's teams in those those years that he was there. Um, and yeah, I, I I really, other than the loss at, at Carmendale, um, you know, I think we 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 should have beaten Rova. I'm not sure if we could have beaten Mount Pulaski or not. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, you know, who can complain about 29 and two and finishing third in the state? You know. Yeah. No. 
And uh, so you finish your high school career with 2,183 points. And, again, I want to emphasize no three-point line. Had there been a three-point line, I don't know what that number would have been. Uh, you averaged 32.6 points per game uh, your senior year. And, again, since most games you were making 12 to 15 field goals, uh, if it had been a three-point line, that would have been probably an average of uh, 44 to 46 points a game. But uh, uh, we'll never know. But um, uh, truly amazing what you were able to do, the Blonde Bomber. We're getting uh, some questions in from some of our uh, some of our viewers, some of our listeners, Jay, and, and we want to run some of these questions by you before we move on to the Kentucky stuff here, okay? And uh, – uh, one of the things is a question about your hair, all right? Uh, obviously, uh, bleach blonde hair, they want to know what you used and how often you used it to bleach that hair white. I have people ask me that every day. <laughs> um, actually, it started out, uh, growing up, I, my hair was real oily and um, just, you know, I had a hard time washing it all the time, trying to keep the oil out of it. So anyway, one day, uh, my, my, my mother's beautician, as a matter of fact, said, well, here, use this, and it'll take the oil out. Uh, but she failed to mention it would also take the color out. Oh, <laughs> okay. So it was kind of a by accident at first then. Okay. It, it, it was. It was. I started doing it when I was in the sixth grade, I believe. And uh, I did it once a month. My mother would put it on once a month. And, um, you know, event, I mean, I went through the whole stages. I went from brown to light brown to orange to yellow to white. <laughs> over, over the seven years that I, you know, that I did that to my hair, I'm, I'm surprised they even have a hair on my head nowadays. Yeah. Because uh, it wasn't pleasant. I mean, the stuff burned my scalp and everything. Uh-huh. But, uh, but uh, yeah, that's how that came about. You know, it was by accident. And, and uh, uh, it, um, I'm glad it turned out that way. Uh-huh. Uh huh. But uh, yeah, it was it was kind of a strange story, but you know that's that's how it went down. Okay, and, and another question coming in here. Uh, people are asking about your your shoes because back then we were all wearing Converse Chuck Taylor tennis shoes, but not Jay Scheidler. You were wearing Adidas. You were one of the early people wearing Adidas. How were you able to wear Adidas and all the rest of us were wearing Converse Chucks? Uh, I had I had real bad feet problems, uh, blisters. Calluses uh, and the, the the canvas shoes, my air, my feet just could not breathe and get the and get the air that it needed to uh, you know to to uh, dissipate those sort of things. So um, I I saw the Amer the Adidas Americanas and um, somebody sent me a, a pair or two and I I tried them and and it seemed to be a little better than the, than the shoes we were wearing. And so it just, you know, I, I was kind of forced into that as well because my feet just couldn't couldn't take uh, uh-huh. wearing the other shoes. And, and uh, the Americanos were kind of a mesh material and would, would let your feet breathe a little bit more. Now, I still had foot problems. I had foot problems at Champagne. I remember having calluses and uh, cut off and shaved down and, and had uh, actually had some uh, medication uh, injected into the bottom of my feet and the uh, feet. My bottom of my feet uh, to uh, you know alleviate the pain and, and, and things like that while I was at Champagne. So it was it was kind of a mess, you know. But uh, uh, we struggled through it somehow. But the shoes did help. Well, you know what? They match pretty good too because those Americana Adidas, they, you know, had the red, white, and blue stripes on it, and and your school colors there were red, white, and blue. You had the red, white, and blue wristbands, so it all kind of blended in well, didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it really did. And, good. Yeah, good good. Uh, and boy, shoe technology has changed a lot. You know, you don't see anybody wearing the Converse canvas shoes anymore, do you? No, absolutely not. Absolutely not. I, you know, and, and we wore we wore Converse uh, leather here at, at UK, right? And I, I still had the foot problems, but golly, I, I went through so many pairs of those. I don't know just from the strenuous workouts and stuff, but I would blow out a pair probably every six weeks or so. But, uh, yeah, she's definitely different nowadays. All right. Well, uh, we're going to move on to uh, your days at, at UK. And, and before we get there, though, I, I'm going to put a photo up on the screen of, of you and your parents and uh, official signing day when you sign to go to Kentucky to be a Wildcat. And, you know, some of the newspaper articles that were coming out leading up to that said that you had narrowed down your decisions to either Illinois or Indiana 
or SIU or Illinois State or Indiana State. Uh, when did the, when did Kentucky get on the radar, and why did you choose Kentucky? They came in relatively late, like you said. Um, I was uh, I, I really didn't know where to go. You know, uh, I I had a lot of people talking to me and this and that, and, and you know, it's a big decision. I didn't really know where to go. I wanted somebody at some point in time to come up to me and say, look, why don't you go here? And I would have said, fine, good, where do I sign? But um, I was very close to going to Indiana. I had a good relationship with, with Coach Knight and his assistants at that time, and, and I had talk, I'd spoken with Coach Knight a few times, been to his basketball camp, and, and uh, he had been in my home uh, uh, to, to talk to me and, and, and attended some of the games. Um, I liked Illinois State a lot. Uh, I liked Coach Smithson there and his, uh, Smithson and, and his his staff, um, but I really didn't know where to go. Uh, but then I had a chance. Uh, to, uh, Kentucky started coming in, sending some recruiters and, and things, and talked to them, and and uh, I was able to watch their games um, on a delayed basis back then, uh, out of out of uh, uh, TV channel in Evansville. And so I would watch their games late at night, not because it was Kentucky, just because it was a, you know it was a basketball game. So I wanted to watch, but I, I was familiar with their with their staff and their and their personnel, and um, I decided to make a recruiting trip uh, down here. Uh, it was in April, as a matter of fact. Basketball season was over, and um, I had I had just played in a couple of All Star games. I think the Dapper Dan in Pittsburgh and um, the one in Dayton, Ohio. And I was just kind of tired from running around and, and things like that. So when I came on my recruiting trip here, I told them, you know, look, I'm tired. I, I don't really feel very well. And so I would like to do as minimal things as possible, see what I need to see and, and, and you know, and everything. So they, they, they felt like that I was sick because uh, I, I basically told them I was sick. So I met, we met at uh, Coach Hall's house and within – 15 minutes of after telling him I didn't feel good, the team doctor was over there giving me a penicillin shot that I didn't need because I wasn't sick. <laughs> but um, it went on from there. They, they showed me around. They showed me Ruff Arena. Um, and, and Ruff had no seats in it at that time. It was just all concrete. And they said, this is where you go to play. And we're going to build a million-dollar home for the, for, the, uh, for the players to live in, which turned out to be Wildcat Lodge. And, um, you know, you're going to take a European trip at least one of the four years that you're here, play against good competition. They didn't promise me anything, didn't, you know, say, you know, they just laid it out there, here it is. You know, I met some of the players at a cookout that they had uh, for me and, and got to know some of them. But I was already, like I said, I was already kind of familiar with the personnel that they had and knew that they had a good chance of, of going pretty far the, at least the first couple of years I was here. And that's all I wanted to wanted was to be a winner. It didn't care where it was. It wasn't because of Kentucky. You know, I really wasn't uh, aware of the tradition of Kentucky at that time. But I knew that they were, you know, that they had a good chance of winning, and I wanted to be a part of that. And uh, that's the, the day that I left. As a matter of fact, we were driving out of town, and I was sitting in the back seat, and and uh, I was just had in my mind right there, I'm coming back here. This is this is the place I'm going to come. So I didn't tell anybody for a long time. <clears throat> And finally, uh, ran into Coach Hall uh, at at some game or something, and I and I told him at that time, I said, Coach, you know what? I'd like to come to Kentucky, uh, but I said I I don't want anybody to know about it right now. And he said, Fine, I won't tell a soul. But uh, that's good news. Glad to hear it, and and you know, look for, look forward to it. So uh, yeah, it was a no brainer for me. Um, I, it was, there was nothing personal I was looking for. You know, I could, I, maybe personally I could have done a little better or put up better numbers somewhere else, but I wanted to win. I had always wanted my, you know, my regardless of what it was, and that was first and foremost in my mind, and, and Kentucky was the, the place that was going to fit that, fit that in my mind, and, and, and that's, that's how I ended up here. Well, Danny, it sounds like uh, somebody did a good sales job there at Kentucky, then, didn't they? Being the late entry like that, and and then he ends up going there. So, well, you know, it's it's kind of like he said; he didn't really know where he wanted to go, so something made him feel comfortable and thought that was a fit. And a lot of times, I think that's how the recruitment deal works. Yeah, yeah, you just got to feel that com- level of comfort there, right? It, it, you know, it, it was for me. You know, like I said, I wanted to win regardless of where it was. And, 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 and in Kentucky, you know, just I just felt like we were going to have a good chance to win a national championship the first couple of years I was here. 
And uh, fortunately, that worked out well and, and, and played out the way I thought. And so, you know, uh, looking at that and going by those, uh, those thoughts, uh, you know, I, I, made a, I made a good choice. Well, you were a fan favorite down there at Kentucky, too. The fans uh, loved your hustle. Uh, they loved the blonde hair. Again, you were known as the blonde bomber down there as well. And uh, it didn't take long for fans to embrace you, Jay. And I, I remember watching, I don't know if it was your first game in a Kentucky uniform, but it was one of the earliest games that you played uh, in a Kentucky uniform uh, your freshman year, and it was nationally televised, and it was Kentucky against Indiana. And that was uh, one of your earliest games there as a freshman. And you came right out of the gate and scored 20 points in that game against Indiana. You remember that game? Oh, uh, do I remember that game? Yeah. yeah. Of course you do. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, you know, like I said, it was uh, it was not not just a personal vendetta, I guess, against Indiana. But I did come very, very close to going there and kind of kind of backed out at, at the last minute um, just because of some of the things that I heard Knight had said. And, and uh, they called me one late one night, uh, and Coach Weltlick, uh, Bob Weltlick, assistantly, has just came up flat out and asked me on the phone, he said, are you going to come to school here or not? And I was like, well, Coach, you know, I, I really don't know right now. And it kind of it kind of turned me a little bit, you know, um, so – you know, I wanted to kind of come out and prove that, you know, hey, this is what you missed, you know. Uh, but I was fortunate, you know, to have a good game on the road in Bloomington, in the Assembly Hall, and uh, we won the game. And, and uh, I think it was my third game of my college career. And um, couldn't have played out any better for me that night. No, it, uh, it was uh, really, really good. And uh, from there, of course, um, you were an integral part of the team. You did uh, have some injury problems there for a while. I know you broke your foot at one time and, and that sort of thing. But, um, boy, that magical season, your sophomore year, 1978, you guys win the, the national championship. Jack Givens has an incredible uh, championship game against Duke, scoring 41 points. Talk about that magical run of 1978, being on that team, being a part of that, and winning the national championship. That had to be quite a ride. Oh, yeah, it certainly was. You know, I was looking so forward to coming into that season uh, because I had started as a freshman the year before. Uh, we had gotten to the uh, finals of the region and, and ran up against uh, North Carolina uh, and Phil Ford and Walter Davis and those guys. And, and once they got the lead on us late in the game, it was over because they went to the four corners and we couldn't do anything about it. But, we, you know, we had a really good chance of winning the national championship that year, the year in 77, the year Marquette won it. But uh, So I was really looking forward to coming back uh, Kyle Kyle Macy was going to be eligible that year, and I had played against him every day in practice the year before, and knew how good he was. And I was really looking forward to being in the backcourt with Kyle. You know, I, I had big visions of us really doing great things. And uh, the second day of practice, uh, I, I fractured the fifth metatarsal of my foot, my right foot, and uh, set me back. Uh, they ended up having to put a screw in it uh, so I could continue to play, but set me back about 10 weeks. I was in a cast for about six weeks and and uh, finally came out of that because they were actually making me ill at my stomach, using my crutches all the time. So I finally threw those away, just hauling around on my cast, which was good because it kept down the atrophy of my right, of my right uh, muscle calf, calf muscle. And uh, But anyway, um, you know, it kind of put me behind the eight ball uh, as far as going into the season. I came back about the third game of that, of that year, as a matter of fact, uh, at Kansas. Um, we were at Kansas on the road. And as a matter of fact, this is, it was the same night that uh, Coach Adolph Ruff passed away. And it was kind of ironic that, uh, you know, he went to Kansas, learned all his basketball there with Paul Allen and, and Nate Smith and everything. And, and, and um it was kind of ironic that we were playing Kansas the night he passed away. But anyway, um, incredible team, incredible players, incredible people. I mean, we we still have the fi- uh, reunions every five years. We mm-hmm. just finished our 40th reunion this past February. And, and um, I mean, I can't say enough about the class of these guys, uh, individuals, um, we made we all made sacrifices because we knew we had a chance to be special, and uh, you can't say enough. I mean, you know, it was we were we were probably one of the best teams. I'm being partial, but probably one of the best teams they've ever had here at the University of Kentucky, and and that's saying a lot. Well, I've got that uh, I've got that 40 year reunion photo up on the screen right now of all you guys, uh, and that had to be a special time getting back together after that. And I noticed that um, Kyle Macy lost his hair. Yeah, 
I, I rib him a little bit about it because uh, because I still have a full head of hair, and he always says, you know, how, how do you how do you keep your hair? But yeah, he shaves a little bit, you know. Um, uh, but you know, Kyle Kyle was the piece that we were missing from the year before, and uh, just an incredible player, smart player, uh, great shooter, the floor general, coach on the floor, just would outsmart you. Um, and then the rest of the guys, I mean, Jack, incredible player, uh, had this unbelievable night against Duke uh, in the championship game. And, and the two big guys down, down, down low with Rick Roby, Mike Phillips, and, and uh, Truman Clayton was the other starting, the starting uh, guard. And Truman was an incredible shooter, probably one of the best street shooters I've ever seen in my life. And then Jack, Big James Lee coming in off the bench and myself. So um, we knew we were good. Um, and 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 but we went and we caught so much flack for it. We went about it such a business-like way. Uh, but we knew that that's what it that's what it was going to take for us to do what we had set out to do. Um, a lot of people call it a year without celebration, uh, that sort of stuff. But uh, but uh, believe me, we celebrated. Anytime we kicked somebody's butt by thirty points, we celebrated. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> you know, but it was it was uh, most incredible. 13 guys in a group that, that I could ever be around. I would take any one of them in the foxhole with me today. And, and, and uh, just an incredible experience. And, and, and we, we still have the ties today. Like I said, we get together. and It's just a, a phenomenal memories. And, and uh, uh, you know, we set out to do what we did. And, you know, we were number one in the, in the country in preseason. And, and finished up that way. So, you know, everybody knew it was just a matter of, of getting it done, and, and we were fortunate to be able to do that because we did lose two games that year, which we shouldn't have. Well, we got another question that's coming here, Jay, and uh, this is from uh, one of our listeners, and this is from uh, Jack Bullock. He uh, operates a, a sports website here in Southern Illinois, too, called uh, Baseline View, which covers a lot of uh, uh, Class A uh, basketball. And he wants uh, to ask you a question about uh, a guy that you might have played against back in the day at Kentucky, a guy who uh, played for Tennessee. Uh, do you recall playing against Tennessee and playing against a guy by the name of Kevin Nash? Absolutely, yeah. Let's see, Nash. Uh, You're the big burly, big burly guy. Yeah, yeah. I think was he, he was a little younger than me, I think, wasn't he? I'm not. Uh, I'm not sure what year he was, but it was. It was in that time span, and there is. I know there's some video on YouTube of you guys playing Tennessee, and and uh, you're you're on the floor against him. But uh, yeah, he was a monster. Got into wrestling and stuff. Yeah. I, yeah. I apologize for that. I mean, I remember that name. Uh, I don't recall really actually playing against him because back then it was you know it was uh, Ernie Grunfeld and 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 and, and uh, Bernard King, you know. Uh, those two guys were sure. my freshman and this and that. So I remember those guys and Johnny Darden and, and some of the other players that they had there. But I mean, Tennessee always had a good team. Uh, but I do remember Kevin, yes. I just don't recall exactly, you know, playing against him. But, you know, that doesn't say that, that doesn't mean I didn't. Yeah, you know, sure. You know. Yeah. Well, I've also got uh, a couple pictures of you up on the screen uh, in your Kentucky days, again, showing that elevation that you had, that vertical jump, because obviously being six one and a half uh, in, in Division One college basketball, you're one of the shortest guys on the floor, and you're always going against guys that are much bigger than you. But as we can see in the photos on the screen, you're rising above them many times uh, above the rim to grab a rebound or get a steal or whatever. And, um, again, just God-given talent and ability there that you were able to utilize. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that was just, I mean, we, uh, uh, I jumped a lot of rope growing up, uh, this and that, but we're always the, 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 the strength of my legs was, was always there. Um, I did work on my vertical a little bit between my junior and senior years in high school. I, I visited my brother. He, he was at Southern Illinois University at that time at Carbondale and, and, uh, they had a trainer in, a, uh, at that time, uh, by the name, his last name was, uh, Spackman, Spockman, Spackman, Dr. Spackman. Boston, I think um, they had. Uh, they were one of the first schools that I knew of that had a machine that had come out to help your vertical. It was called the Leaper. I machine. remember the Leaper. We, we had one of those in Hamilton County. Yeah, we had one at Flora too. Yeah, and and Southern Illinois at that time were, were they had a really really good gymnastics program, and you know how those people can get off the floor. Oh yeah. 
something and everything. So I went down and spent about three weeks with my brother one summer and, and worked on the leaper every, twice a day, did some stretching exercises that, uh, that the doc told me to do to, to stretch the hamstrings and, you know, and all that kind of stuff. And, and uh, I went down, I think I went down to, to Dennis's at Carbondale. I think my vertical and my starting out was like a 32. And in three weeks' time, working on that leaper, when I left, uh, it was I had gotten it up to 39. That's how, wow. that's how much wow. that, that, that increased it. Yeah, so it was a big help to, you know, for, for that. But, uh, you know, again, I was blessed with, with, the, you know, with the God-given ability, first of all, and just was able to tweak it a little bit more with the, with the exercises and the machines that I worked out on it, too. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Well, since your playing days, uh, you've, you've entered into a lot of different things, but I know you were in the coaching ranks there for a while as uh, you were coaching, um, I, I guess, their semi-pro team, the, the um, Bluegrass Stallions. Um, tell us about that experience, Jay, as a coach. Hello? Um, they, had, uh, they had just uh, started the team, uh, I think it was in 2010, and um, – they were uh, looking for some players around here. The, the gentleman that, start, that started it, a, a gentleman by the name of Tony Chase, uh, got the team together. We had tryouts and and, and on everything, uh, the whole shebang. And, and Kyle, he had he had signed Kyle to uh, to be the coach. And uh, at the time, I was working for a radio station. Um, we had a Sunday morning talk show, call-in show every Sunday morning from nine to eleven on the ESPN affiliate here in town. Uh-huh. And um, I was I was thinking that we, me and my my radio partner, were probably going to be the play-by-play and color guys for the team. That's that's how it initially went. And uh, but I helped Kyle, Kyle asked me if I wanted to come over and help with tryouts and and all that kind of stuff. So we did that. And and he Kyle finally asked me one day. He said, "Well, would you rather be on the radio side or you want to be over there with me?" And I said, "Well, if I have my choice, I would rather be over there with him." You know. Uh, and so that's how that happened. So I was his assistant for one year. And uh, we had a decent team. We, I think we finished twenty and nine that year, uh, and made it to the finals of the uh, second round of their tournament, which was just before getting to uh, the final playoffs. And uh, we had a lot of uh, four or five former UK players on it. Uh, talented team, fun team. Um, and then uh, we lost those guys the following year, and Kyle didn't want to do it anymore. He got more involved in his broadcasting and things like that. So the owner of the team asked me that, you know, he told me that he wanted me to take over. So I, you know, gladly accepted. And uh, we weren't as good, <laughs> you know. I, uh, and I was probably way in over my head um, trying to coach when I had really never coached before. And it's, it's, it's tough. It's, it's, it's really uh, what was frustrating for me was that uh, I would see players do things or not do things that I just felt like was secondhand and and was was you know should have just been a no brainer to be able to do and uh, would, I would, it would frustrate me to see that they couldn't do things that I thought should have been easy for them and uh, you know but it is what it is and and we didn't have a very good year. Uh, that year, and uh, they finally they finally said, "Okay, you've done enough with about six games to go." They said, "Yeah, why don't you uh, find another career?" <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so yeah, it's not a big deal, you know. I, mm-hmm. I was over so I over my head and everything, but it was fun. We got to travel. We were up in Canada and, and New York and, and Oklahoma and places, so it was really good, fun to travel and things. And yeah. it was quite an experience. Uh, I don't think I would ever want to get back into that field, but uh, you know, it was something that I tried to do and and, and learn from it and and yeah. moved on. Well, Jay, you know they always say the best basketball coaches is the last man sitting on the bench, not the star player. And yeah. it's it's just for those reasons that you said that guy sat down there on the end of the bench and he really watched and learned the game, and the expectations for him weren't that high because nothing came easy for him, and for guys like you, like you said, it was hard not to have that expectation out of everybody because you had the gift and the talent to do it, and you just assumed that everybody else could. Yeah, yeah, and I perfectly understand why. 
and I'm not comparing myself in any way, shape, or form, but I can certainly understand why Michael Jordan didn't want to get into coaching because I think he kind of related the same sort of things. It was frustrating for him to see players that to do things or not do things that he it came second nature to him. So, you know, yeah. and it, that's, that's the way it is, yeah. Uh-huh. Well, Jay, we've uh, taken a trip down memory lane there with you, uh, with uh, Lawrenceville and Kentucky and, and even some things after that. But, uh, you know, we also want to bring you on the air today because uh, you've, you've got some other passions in your life now. I mean, here you are at the age of 60, and, and, uh, but there's some things that, um, that have become a new passion in your life and, and give you a chance to talk about those right now. Absolutely. Um, you know, just, just recently in the last uh, three months or so, um, I have I have uh, been changed and, and have kind of uh, got my calling, so to speak. Uh, and it and it and it. I guess like most other people that, that find their way, uh, uh, it took me a little bit longer. But but you know something gets you, something hits you, and something affects you in a in a, in a way that uh, just totally transforms your life. And that's what has happened to me. Um, I was contacted by. Uh, um, a friend of mine, uh, I didn't know him at the time, but we knew uh, he knew of me just because he lived in Lawrenceville for a little while after after I was gone. His name is Pastor John Collins. Um, he is originally from North Carolina. Uh, he lives in, in uh, uh, Williamsburg, Kentucky now, and, and that kind of helped connect us. But uh, yeah, uh, I I feel blessed to to have been in, in, in that God has put me in His path. And uh, because it was just my happenstance, uh, you know, he, I didn't know of him, and, and he had called, uh, he had been in the ministry for about 14 years now, and um, he had called the U.K. Uh, Athletic Department to uh, find if there was any former players around that, uh, that he could talk to uh, to get involved in some things. And uh, apparently the, the U.K. Athletic Department gave him Rex Chapman's name, and my name. And he said, well, I know Jay. He doesn't know me, but we have the hometown connection, so I'll call him. So that, that for me was just God putting me in his path to, uh, to do whatever it was that he had in his that for me to do. Uh, was to 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 come to God and, and to follow God, and and uh, it has been a overwhelming blessing since then, and and I, I feel so so changed. And people have even commented that you know you look different, you look so alive, and and it's it's hard to explain, but I'm sure you understand. And 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 uh, Pastor John has just been incredible to me, and and we're we're working on great things, doing great things, um, and getting ready to uh, to get on the road here, so to speak, uh, here coming soon with some revivals and 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 fundraisers for different uh, organizations, and uh, it's just been a blessing. I'm looking so forward to it each and every day, and uh, it is it has totally changed my life. And uh, I look forward to trying to touch other people in the same way, and 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 get them to understand and to know that that this is the way to go. Because I was not a religious person growing up. We we knew nothing of church growing up. It was just it was not in our family. Um, I kind of got introduced to uh, to the church when I came to UK. Um, and I've always been a believer but not always a, uh, a practitioner. So, um, but it's, it's been an incredible journey, and I'm looking forward to, uh, to some of the stuff that Pastor John and, 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 and John Collins Ministries are, are involved with and are, and are attempting to do. Um, our two main focuses are um, with these revivals and, and, and things are uh, mainly the opioid issue that, that we face in this country that is just totally horribly out of control. It has affected some people in my lives, and I don't think there's too many people that have not been affected by that issue. Uh, it's incredible. Something you know, something has to be done. So we're going to do our part to, to raise money for that cause uh, and, to, and to help out in that way. And also the homeless problems that we have in this country. It's, 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 it's a shame that, you know, that we have homeless people, so many homeless people in, in this country. And it's everywhere, and, and it can't be avoided. But uh, uh, they kind of get pushed to the side, and 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 uh, so we're we're doing all we 
can. We're going to do all we can to uh, to help, uh, you know, with, with God coming into their lives and helping them out in any way that we possibly can. So it's going to be an incredible journey, and, I, and I'm, I'm really, really looking forward to it. Well, Jay, you know, you, you, you can't pick up a newspaper today or turn on the TV without seeing something about the opioid crisis and more and more people, you know, taking their life uh, as a result of of overdosing on, on painkillers or opioids. I mean, it's just really become a problem for all ages of people, not only kids, but also adults as well. And, um, yeah, something's got to be done, and I admire what you and uh, John Collins are, are trying to do out there, and, and I want to encourage people that if you come into this area at all to speak, that uh, they will certainly want to come out and, and hear you speak and, and heed your message. I, I hope so, because, you know, uh, Pastor John is an incredible uh, 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 person, uh, inspirational, insightful. I mean, he, he is, is, he tells it like it is, and, and, and we believe the same way. But yeah, we, uh, we want to do everything that we can, um, because like I said, it, is, it affects almost everybody has been affected by this in some way, shape, or form. Um, I know I've, I've, I've lost, uh, uh, my in, in one of my marriages, we won't count how many, but there was a uh, my wife's sister's daughter uh, got involved a few years back, and she she lost her battle. She lost her life at the age of 31 last December due to an overdose, and, and I had no idea that she was in it, even involved. And and uh, as a matter of fact, my former stepdaughter, her biological father. Uh, almost um, OD'd uh, here about three or four months ago, uh, but they were able to, to, to get to him, and he's in rehab, and God bless him, and, 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 and I hope the Lord puts his hands on him to heal. But he's in rehab, so he's hopefully going to be okay. But it, it has affected me, and it's like it affects everybody else. So um, it's just it's horrible. It, it, it's, it's just something has to be done and, and again you know we're going to try to do all we can well it hits closer to home to people than what you think and, and like you said you mentioned that you didn't know that this particular person was involved and i think that's the way it is with a lot of us there's people uh near us or in our lives or that we might work with or, or whatever come in contact with we may not know that they're uh, struggling with a problem right now like that uh, because they do a good job of hiding it sometimes uh, and then all of a sudden it becomes too late, and a situation happens where all of a sudden there's an overdose, and the person suddenly dies, and we're like, boy, I didn't even know that he or she had a problem, you know? Yeah, I was I was totally shocked, uh, you know, because like I said, I knew her when she was five, six, seven years old, and just the sweetest little girl, and of course we lost touch after, after, my, after my marriage ended and everything, but uh, uh, she was still around, and I kept in contact with uh, my stepdaughter. And uh, she informed me last. She uh, texted me last uh, uh, December and and uh, let me know that uh, Leah had passed to an overdose. And I was just in. You know, I, I was speechless, uh, you know. And and so, you know, something has to be done. And 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 these people need help. And 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 they're struggling. They they and they can't get out of it. It is so hard. It it it, it takes over their 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 whole mind and 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 everything. And and. Uh, you know, there's 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 got to be something that you know that we can do and work on each and day, each and every day to try to to try to solve this problem. I know it's not going to get done in a, in a day or a week or a month or a year or, or a decade, but hopefully, you know, we can we can make a dent in it and 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 and, and try to curtail it well, you know, as much as we can. Well, Jay, in uh, preparing for this interview with you today, I, I had a chance to reach out to Pastor uh, John Collins yesterday. I gave him a call. We talked uh, for probably an hour or so, I'd say. And, uh, you know, and, and again, um, he certainly has a passion for this, and I know that you do too. And, and I know that together you guys are going to reach a lot of people and make a positive impact on a lot of lives. And, and if we can somehow work together with you to, to uh, bring you guys into this area to, to speak to some people publicly, we certainly would welcome the opportunity to, to give you some assistance in doing that. But I know that John's got a website that uh, people can go to, too, for more information about his ministry and his efforts. I don't know what that website is. I don't have it in front of me. I don't know if you do or not, Jay, offhand. But I know that people can Google him uh, for sure. Uh, oh, absolutely. And I do not have that information in front of me. I apologize wholeheartedly. Um, but he's, it's pretty easy to find. Um, he's in Kentucky, not far from you. He's about an hour and a half from you, right, in Kentucky? Yeah, he's about an hour and a half south of me, yes. Uh, and, but he is uh, planning on, and, hope, and sometime here in the next 
45 days or a couple of months, I believe he is coming. He's he's moving to Lexington, so we'll be closer together and uh, be able to start uh, really, really working on this problem. But yeah, um, we're we're looking to do great things uh, uh, with with helping people as much as we can. And I'm sure that you know anybody that wants to get involved and and feel the way we do about it, uh, we, you know, we are going to be more than welcome to to come anywhere, go anywhere to. You know, to try to do anything we can to, uh, you know, to uh, to try to to try to end this this issue. Well, well that's awesome. And again, uh, we'll share some of that information as as we move forward here too. One more thing before we let you to go, we want to kind of come uh, bring us back full circle right now because I know uh, not long ago you had a a reunion of sorts in Lawrenceville. Uh, not only you and and the teams from uh, '74 and '76, but also the the teams from the. Uh, Marty Simmons and, and Doug Novzik era, too, were there as you guys had all the, the hardware there together uh, with Coach Ron Felling. And that had to be a really, really special evening, having all those uh, former players and teams together. And, and it had to be a, a thrill for the fans that were there, I'm sure. It was. It was very special. Um, that's the first time that we had all in a collective group gotten together in any, in any way like that. And, and it was a special night for, for those teams to be recognized and, and for especially Coach Felling to, to, to be able to be there and be recognized for everything that he did for that, for that school, that community, that town, that part of the state. Um, there, 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 there couldn't have been or, or, or will probably never be a, a person to affect one community or one part of the state or the whole state, if you want to look at it that way, the way that Coach Felling did. And, and uh, I was I was so uh, proud to be a part of that. We all were, and uh, yeah, it was that was a special weekend. And and uh, it was before I think it was a matter of fact uh, it was might have been the last home game that they played at that school uh, because they built a new school a, a couple of years uh, uh, ago. And um, they they that as a matter of fact that school our old school caught fire um, after it was closed down. But yeah. It was certainly a special evening, and everybody enjoyed themselves and, and seeing guys that they hadn't seen in probably 25, 30 years. So, yeah, it was really really a good time and, and, and uh, special to be around those guys again. Well, you know, things have changed so much in, uh, in athletics and sports here in Southern Illinois since those, uh, since those glory years of the 70s and 80s, and, and even the conferences, you know, have all changed. The North Egypt Conference doesn't exist anymore, and we all miss that because that was such a special conference with those eight teams in it that we're all about the same size population wise about the same size enrollment wise and you know it's a shame that the north egypt conference is not around anymore and teams have split off to go into you know either the black diamond or the little lion eye or the cahokia conference or you got mount carmel playing across the river in indiana it's it's really just not the same as it used to be jay really not yeah, I know it's not, and it is a shame because that conference, uh, you know, to be in that area, I mean, there was a lot of talented ball players and talented athletes in that conference and in that area. I mean, every every conference game was a struggle, uh, uh, you know, it was a fight, you know, fight to the death and everything. So, yeah, I respected all those people, and, and it really was a, a, a good time, you know, to be in that conference, and I'm sorry that it's, you know, it's not there anymore. Yeah. Uh, the things have changed, and you know the people move on and do certain things. But yeah, it was it was certainly a special time too. Well, you know, back in particularly your senior year, 1976, everywhere the Lawrenceville Indians went, the gym was packed. And I'm talking about even into towns that weren't necessarily basketball towns because Mount Carmel was not a basketball town. But when you played the Aces at Mount Carmel, guess what? The hilltop was was packed. When you went to Salem, the B.E. Gum Gym, to play the Wildcats, which wasn't really a basketball town at the time, that gym, that big old gym held 3,000 people. But guess what? It was packed when Jay Shidler and the Indians were in town. It was a crazy time, wasn't it? Yeah, I, I appreciate that, you know, but, you know, uh, people follow Lawrenceville uh, a lot even before then, um, you know, because they've had a, 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 an excellent, tremendous, uh, you know, programs back through the days. But, yeah, and it was fun. I mean, it was fun for everybody to know that, you know, when you come in the gym, everybody everybody hates you and everybody wants to see you lose and, and you know, this and that. And so you know, it made for really special games. It was kind of like the – you know, circle the calendar type games. You know, uh, right. when, when we when we came to town, and and uh, fortunately we came out on top more often than not. But uh, you know, it was it was a special competition, and 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 it was very competitive, and and it, uh, it was just a super super uh, area to to be in athletics. You know, at that time.
time, and, and uh, we, you know, we enjoyed every minute of it. And, and I know that a lot of people didn't really care for us a whole lot, but uh, at least they came out to see us, uh, see us play. Well, I want to tell you, we all respected you, okay? We really did. And I get asked the question a lot. People will say, well, you played with Shiler at that time, against him at that time. Was he a trash talker? And I said, no, he really wasn't a trash talker. He would give you a look. Because, you know, he would just rise up above you and knock down a shot and give you a look. But, no, nah, I mean, you weren't really a trash talker. You just let your play really do the talking. And I always thought that you were really a gentleman out there, Jay, because you were the type of guy that every time the referee handed you the basketball, you said thank you. Every time a foul was called on you, you raised your hand. Uh, if you had a collision with somebody on the baseline on a tough play, you extended your hand and you helped your opponent up. I mean, that's really the kind of player you were. Uh, yeah, you were tough as nails, but I thought you were always a gentleman, and I think that um, we all respected you and Lawrenceville. Well, I, and I appreciate that, and and, and uh, you know that goes back to my upbringing and and the way I was raised. You know, my parents were just excellent in in keeping us grounded uh, because it would have been very easy, especially very easy for kids nowadays, uh, being in the same in the same uh, type spotlight and things but uh you know no we were never we were never that uh that kind of people um i always respected the people that i played against uh, because they're trying to do the same thing that i'm doing we're both trying to succeed you know and everything so but uh, i learned that at an early age to uh to be kind to the officials uh you know that sort of thing i would say thank you if they handed me the ball if i was taking it out of bounds or at the free throw line i would always say thank you because you know i mean uh it might have been superficial uh, or whatever, but, you know, I meant it because, you know, uh, they control the game, and so I respected their job. Uh, but, you know, you do those sort of things that, uh, you know, it might help you get a call maybe late down, late in the game, somewhere down the line. You know what I'm saying? So uh, that was the way we were brought up and, and the way that we were taught to approach the game, and that's how we did it. And, and uh, you know, it, uh, it, it worked for us. You know, Jay, I was talking to an official that had officiated 40 years uh, a couple of years ago down at the El Dorado Holiday Tournament, and I asked him what era was the best era of basketball. He said the mid-70s and early 80s, he said they need to get some game film out and show these kids what the game really was because they have no comprehension today. No, not at all. Not at all. It is totally different nowadays. Um, there's There's very little respect between – opponents or or even teammates at times nowadays you know that sort of thing but uh yeah you gotta you, you gotta respect the game and, and respect the opponents and, and and that sort of thing because you know no matter how good you are and this was always taught to us or to me and, and my brother and things no matter how good you are and no matter how good you think you are there's going to be a time where you're going to come across somebody that's a little bit better than you so you know you have no right you really have no position to Want what you do, or, or you know anything like that, because like I said, you're going to run across somebody that's going to be better, and they're going to put you in your place. So we just took the opposite approach to to try to deflect that and and and, and not let that happen. Now I ran across a lot of players that were a lot better than me, believe me, but you know I, I never, we just never had that mindset. Well, yeah, I'm sure when you got to Kentucky, you know. Uh... It was uh, kind of like a guy told me, he said when he played at the grade school level, he said the show was revolved around him. And he said, when I got to the high school level, I went from being the man to one of the boys. And looking back at your career, I'm sure you could say the same thing. When you uh, were a Lawrenceville Indian, you were the man. And when you got to Kentucky, you were just one of the guys. Right, exactly. You know, and, and especially those first couple of years here in UK. I mean, we had a lot. You know, we had a lot of high school all Americans. You know, uh, all staters, all Americans, guys that eventually got drafted. You know, but but uh, in those days, and, and especially during that time, um, kids were willing to make sacrifices to be better as a team. It's not all about me, and that was the the good thing about being here because. Guys got that. Guys understood that, and they made sacrifices for the team to be successful and to reach goals as a whole. And you just don't see that very often nowadays, and it's a shame, really. Is yeah, you know, Dave Lee, longtime coach at McLeansboro, he used to always tell us, "There's no I in team." There, there is.
is no IN team, not even close. So, uh, yeah, if you don't get that, then, you know, you might want to look for something else to do. I, you know, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that happens <laughs> Jay, I got to share one more quick story for you, and then we're going to let you go. We got to wrap things up here. But um, hey, back when you played us at Flora, uh, you had already beat us at your place uh, by I think uh, you know double digits, and I think you had forty-four against us over at your place. So when we played you later in the season uh, at at Flora at Conley Gym, uh, Coach Toller, George Toller, our coach at the time, in the locker room before the game, he says, uh, "Well, guys, uh, here's the game plan." Um, if we can hold Scheidler to 32 points, we've got a pretty good chance of winning because we feel like we match up pretty good with everybody else. So, you know, Jay's going to get his points. The, the goal is just to make him work as hard as, as we can, make him struggle to get those 32, but let's hold him to 32, and then I think we've got a good chance of winning this game. All right, so you, you go out, you scored 39 on us, and you beat us by seven. So I think Coach Toller was pretty well on with what he said. <laughs> Incredible, yeah. <laughs> That's kind of funny. Um, yeah, maybe he knew what he was talking about. I, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I, thought, I thought you'd appreciate that story, though. That was a good one. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, yeah. And I and I, and I told you earlier, Randy. You know that I always I always liked Coach Toller, and uh, the times that I was around him, we always had a good time, and and Felling respected him a lot, and and uh, yeah, those were those were uh, incredible times, and uh, you know. Um, Going against again, going against those teams in the conference was so uh, was so fun and so competitive. But uh, that is a good story. I like that. Which gym did you like to play in the most when you were on the road in the North Egypt Conference? Which gym did you like to play in? Oh, I, I know I know which one I did. So I'm going to see if you say the same one. Go ahead. Uh, I mean, besides your besides your own gym, which gym did you really uh, enjoy playing in? I I have a feeling what you're going to say. Oh wow, well, um, you know. I never really even thought about it. Uh, our rival, Bridgeport. Was there you go. Gym, there you I go. Was, that was a good gym. Yeah, yeah it was. Nice gym. Uh, the, the layout of it. And it held quite a few people. Though. Oh, it, yeah. It, and they it, still it use fun. that today. They still use that today for sectional tournaments because it's so big and holds so many people. But you always played yeah. well there. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And it was always a struggle playing there. Uh, Bridgeport had some, uh, Red Hill had some had some nice teams, you know. Mm-hmm. But we got to play, you know, we got to play our sectionals there and and that sort of thing. So we were quite familiar with it. But yeah, yeah, you're right. You know that that was a, a nice place to play. Yeah. Jay, hey, it's been a pleasure. We're out of time. Uh, we went overtime, actually. Thanks so much for spending the time with us today. We've really enjoyed a trip down memory lane with you and the Lawrenceville and the Kentucky days and, and, and so intrigued and so encouraged by what you and, and Pastor John Collins are doing now as well. And we look forward to some great things and some great stories about uh, what you're trying to do as you go around and you speak uh, to different people. And, if again, if we can help at all in any way and, and getting you guys into this area to speak, uh, we would love to do that. But it's just been a pleasure to, to visit with you today, and uh, let's not wait 42 years before we talk again, okay? <laughs> well, we, we will not. Uh, we, we will be in touch, and, and, and Randy, Danny, both, I, I appreciate you guys so much and, and allow me to come on and, and, and tell my story, so to speak. But, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to what's uh, ahead of us and, and what's to come, and, and uh, we're going to work as hard as we can to uh, – to fight the problems that we spoke of, and and uh, I, I I appreciate you guys giving me the time today, and uh, if you, I'll join you anytime you want to, and I'm sure that we'll be in touch, and we'll try to get some things going on in your area, and and uh, we'll see what happens. But I've appreciated it so much, and and I'm blessed, and 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 God bless you guys, and I hope everything goes well for you, and and uh, stay in touch. All right, we sure will, Jay. Have yourself a great weekend. Take care. All right. Thank you so All much. Right. All right. Thank you. Okay, bye-bye. Jay Scheidler, the Blonde Bomber. That was a lot of fun. Yes, it was. We uh, definitely went over time on the interview. We apologized to both him and everybody, but uh, there was just a lot of material there to get to. I and mean, when you uh, talk about his you, career you and, could, and what he's you doing You could talk to this guy for hours. Oh, yeah, yeah. But uh, very humble guy. Uh, always giving credit to his teammates, his coaching staff, his parents for his upbringing and and, um, you know, what he's been through and what he's been able to accomplish. And, um, boy, to have that team buy in the way they did in 1976 and, and let him shoot like he did and just set picks for him constantly, um, that was special. Well, you know, he said the sacrifices his teammates made mm-hmm. for him. Yeah. Yeah, sacrifices. That's the key word right there. And they, and they really did. And, um, you know, 
Other than Jay, the other guys on that team that year were average players. I'm not going to say they were great players. They weren't bad players, but they were average players. But Coach Felling had this knack of getting the most out of them, and he was such a good coach and uh, uh, tactician. And, and man, oh, man, I mean, all you had to do was give Jay an inch, and that's it. You know, Randy, a lot of those guys in that era had the same qualities, mm-hmm. those guys that coached. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, they had a lot of teams. You'll talk to them, and they'll they'll tell you some of their fondest memories yeah. are the teams that overachieved. Right, yeah. He said, uh, uh, you take my senior year, the Evansville Courier said, uh, we'll be lucky to win six games. The Foxes were in a rebuilding year. Mm-hmm. We lost six. We went 22-6. and six. We lost to Benton in regional championship. They go and play. Lawrenceville, first game at State, Lawrenceville thumps them by 30. You know, yeah. uh, that's kind of dominant team they had with Novsek and Simmons. Sure. There. So, uh, right. you know, uh, sometimes teams just really rally around each other and come to occasion, you know. Uh, the Foxes uh, go finish third the next year after I graduate, and uh, then they go on that 35-0 and right. run to be state champions. Mm-hmm. and. All those guys were a part of that team they said was going to win six games. Sure, yeah. So uh, amazing stories. But uh, fun to relive uh, some of those early days, those mid-'70s teams and, and uh, that sort of thing. I just uh, really enjoyed visiting with Jay today going down memory lane. And I, I know it was uh, fun for him, too, and fun for a lot of our listeners. Uh, a lot of former players that played against him logged on listening or watching today, and, and I hope that you guys enjoyed it, too. And I hope we asked him the questions that – that you wanted to ask as well. We tried to get as many answers to questions as we could, but we just we literally ran out of time. So uh, oh yeah, you know uh, we were anticipating being gone at nine thirty, yeah. and here it is ten fifteen. Yeah, so we better we better shut her down. But thanks so much uh, for tuning in, everybody. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks again to Jay Scheidler for his time, and we'll be back next Saturday morning for another Sports Couch. Sixty minutes, usually sixty minutes, a great local sports talk right here at eight thirty on Saturday mornings here on ninety point nine The Vine and on areasports.net. Have a great weekend, everyone. So long. This is your home for best Christian music. WVYN, Blueford Wayne City, Fairfield, Mount Vernon.